Welcome back to another week of Fullcom Coffee Break. I'm glad to have you with me this week. Um, I wanted to talk with you just briefly about why we are doing more restorative practices rather than just discipline. And one of the things you'll learn about me as time goes on is that I, I like to start my conversations with a brief history or a brief story, and today is no different. So I, I, I just need to um, point this out, and I, I have this conversation with people a lot. So if you've heard this before, I apologize. But we are, as a human species, we are wired in our DNA we are wired to make sense of the world. We cannot live in the unknown. We have to, if, if we don't have all the pieces of an event, we sort of try out different things into that story to make it something that we can live with and then that becomes our reality. Let me give you an example. So, Billy Joe and Bobby Sue, our teachers will understand that reference, I'm sure. Billy Joe and Bobby Sue are dating, <clears throat> and they've been dating for a while. And one day, Billy Joe walks out of school, and she sees Bobby Sue standing next to the bus talking to Malik. And he stops. He doesn't walk over. He doesn't interrupt the conversation. They're standing very close, and he just watches. And as they're talking, uh, Bobby Sue gives him a big hug, maybe kisses him on the cheek, and then Malik gets on the bus. And Bobby Sue goes to her car, goes home. Now, Billy Joe doesn't really know what happened there. He saw his girlfriend give another guy a hug and a kiss on the cheek. And so he starts to put things into place to make up a story. And he decides that Bobby Sue is cheating on him with Malik, going out with Malik behind his back. He doesn't have any evidence for that. But that story makes sense to him. And that becomes his reality. Now, there are two things that we need to always understand when we make up these stories. It, almost entirely, the things we make up are negative. We hardly ever make up a positive story. They're almost always negative. And the second thing that we need to understand is they are almost always wrong. Negative and wrong. And so that night, uh, Bobby Sue sends some text messages to Billy Joe and he doesn't respond. She tries to call him a couple of times. He doesn't respond. He's mad. She's cheating on him. She's going out behind his back, and he hates Malik, and maybe he's going to fight Malik tomorrow, and, you know, all this stuff going through his head until finally the next morning she catches him in the cafeteria, and she wants to know what's wrong, and he finally tells her, well, because you're cheating on me with Malik. She's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. I saw you at the bus. I saw you hug him. I saw you kiss him on the cheek. And then you left, and I know you're cheating on me. And she says, look, you could not be any further from the truth. Malik has been a friend of mine for a long time. You know that. And Malik's grandmother just passed away from cancer. And I was just telling him how sorry I was that his grandmother had passed away and trying to give him some comfort. And he was very appreciative of that. It had nothing to do with going out with Malik. Well, now, you know, Bobby Joe feels like an idiot because he made up a story and it was negative and it was wrong, but it was the reality that drove his emotions. So we see this all the time in school. Kid comes to me, so-and-so looked at me wrong in the cafeteria. I think they want to fight me. Um, so-and-so posted this very vague social media post that doesn't mention me at all, but I know it's about me and I want to fight them. Uh, the teacher calls on me when I'm not ready and I think she's picking on me. I mean, all these things happen because students don't have all the facts. They make up a story. The story is negative and the story is almost always wrong. 
as an administrator, I don't want to make that mistake. Teacher sends a kid to me, they send me a text message, it really doesn't tell me the whole story of what happened in the classroom, the kid comes in, they don't really know why they're there, and I immediately just assign a discipline. You're going to RLC tomorrow, you're going to ATS, uh, we're going to write, you know, you're, uh, whatever it is. We don't want to do that. <clears throat> so we have sort of changed our processes this year. Parents need to know this. And if a student is being disruptive in class, there's probably a reason why that student is being disruptive in class. So when they send, a, they send that student to the office, rather than come talk to me, that student is going to go talk to Mr. Lethko, our restorative interventionist. Now this happens across all SLCs, but Mr. Lethko is the one who deals with full comp students. And he's gonna to talk to that student. And he's gonna to try to figure out what's going wrong. Is there something that happened this morning or something that's going on at home or do they need to eat something because their blood sugar's low? I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why a student might be disruptive in a classroom other than the fact that they're just being bad. We wanna know that. And if we can come to some resolution with that student, we want to allow that student to go back to the next class. We're not gonna send them back to the class they got sent out of, not going there. But the next class on their schedule, we're gonna send that kid back to class with an understanding that we're gonna check on them, see how they're doing and see how things are going. If that student continues to be disruptive in class, they will again meet with Mr. Lethko but this time Mr. Lethgo is going to make a phone call home and Mr. Lethgo and the student and a parent or guardian is going to have a brief conference on the phone to try to figure out what's happening, what's going on, and how can we best stop this activity so it doesn't continue to disrupt class. If it happens a third time, after we have stepped in and tried to make some sense out of what's going on, then it comes to me and I have some choices for discipline. And we can do a restorative learning center for a half a day or a day, even two days if the behavior is really bad. We could do our alternative to suspension program uh, for a day or two days where a student has to do certain things while they're there to earn their way back out, back into the classroom. Or I could just say, you know what, this is, this, this is not going to work. I, you're going home for two days. I think what I will wind up doing is taking it in those steps. We will try RLC where a student has much more time to reflect on their actions and try to come to grips with why they're doing what they're doing. And then we would go to ATS as sort of a last resort. My goal is to, first of all, Keep a student in a classroom as much as possible because that's where the best and most effective learning is going to take place in that classroom. But second of all, we really want to know what's going on. We want to understand. We, we don't want to make up stories that are negative and wrong in our heads about why this activity is happening. We are seeking to understand. And I want students and parents to know that, that this is not, you know, a kid's going to skate and they're not, you know, they're going to get off easy. They're not going to, they're not going to be suspended out of school. They will be. They will go to ATS. They will spend time in RLC. But only after we have done our due diligence of figuring out why this is happening and trying to put things in place that could stop it from happening continually. If you have any questions, you're free to email me. But until then, we'll see you next week.